Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer and listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mokhobe. I welcome you to another exciting, I always say they're exciting, but I'm really not exaggerating guys. This one is a super exciting interview. Um, I've invited um, an entrepreneur, I've invited Kaho Kiyotswaiti to come and share with us on all things financial, stock market, you know. Uh, liquidity ratios, all those things you'll discuss. But uh, for, please kindly just uh, strike that button. We really like your support. We need for you to strike that uh, subscribe button, guys, so that we can grow uh, this platform. We need your support. And uh, we have to also uh, wrestle with these algorithms that keep changing. So if you don't uh, subscribe, uh, we, we don't grow and we don't even stay in the picture. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaho Kiyotswaiti. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Thank you so much. It's an honor yeah. to be here, sir. Okay, it's a yes, pleasure. Sir. All right, we, we want to start with the, the basics, uh, the introductions, background, uh, a little bit about uh, your academics and so on. Okay. Yeah, um, my name is Kaho Kiyotswaiti. I am an accredited financial trainer and a consultant. Um, I come from Uchudi. Um, I also went into the financial space after I acquired my account and finance with BAC in conjunction with Sheffield Hallam University. Which university? Sheffield Hallam University in the UK. And also I did my ACCA. Um, currently I'm doing my master's. Are you a chartered financial. accountant? Yes, sir. Okay, in addition to all your other accomplishments? Yes. Okay. So I decided to educate rather than being in the office to mm. do the, the numbers mm -hmm. that I understand so that when I look at the company, I can be able to advise, look at the numbers and so forth. Um, currently, I'm pursuing my master's in financial investments. And also, we do um, a lot of empowerment. Um, I'm a very keen believer of personal development. So most of the time I do read a lot, think. My mm, first record, yeah. it was, um, I read my first 100 books got 2019 mm -hmm. in the whole year. So from then I always want to surpass that record. So my target for this is one train. That would be two books a week. Two because and there are 52 half. books, there are 52 weeks in a, in a year. Yeah. And you read 100, that's yeah. on average of two a week. Average. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because on a monthly, I do like eight, nine, eight, nine. Mm. Yeah, depending on the number of pages. But I always say not less than 150. Okay. So I think you've surpassed me, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm a one week, uh, one book a week guy. We need, we need Because it also depends on thickness. Yes, because I think I saw a quote. They said an average CEO reads 60. Then it I said, is, I'm uh, average. Said, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm very uncommon. I should pass or double that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. So even when I sometimes I post, I call uncommon me because I don't want to. I want people to experience something they never experienced in me because mm. I do believe I carry a special gift mm. to educate and live the world in a better place. So that's why I'm into empowerment. We do trainings. We do mentorships. We do specifically into entrepreneurship, personal development, and financial literacy. Okay. Yes, sir. What is wealth management? This is something that you've really delved into. Yeah. Wealth management is, um, in fact, wealth is accumulation of certain things that changes your financial status or net worth, and mostly we call them income generating assets. Um, and you find that wealth is a combination of assets and liabilities. Mm -hmm. We look at them both and assess for Remo Kobe, where are you in terms of your wealth status? When you say you are a millionaire, what do you mean? When you say you are a multi-millionaire, what do I mean? A billionaire. Um, it is the same thing that Forbes used to calculate the net worth of companies, individuals, and so forth. So 
wealth management is being able to help people who have this amount of assets to generate it because some of them may not have time to manage their property. Someone just buy a property, leave it, buy another one, leave it, gets mm. dilapidated. The development goes to that property. Let's say you bought it 10 years ago in Palapa. Right now, Bust is just the next to your property. You still don't know how you can make sure that this, you can turn mm. that into a cash flow. I know you're into property. So you mm. find that a lot of people don't understand how to manage this wealth. Mm. That is why there's a very nice show that I like in South Africa. I blew it. It shows you the mindset of an individual. I like. What does it talk about that show? Uh, it talks about people who got money, certain things like uh, from trust funds, uh, money from Lotto, and you get a two million, three million within four or five months, you are broke. So they always call these people to the show. You should check it out on how they blew it. Uh, are they are talking out of pride or out of regret? Out of regret. <laughs> out of regret. The mm. other one actually attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. So, because, like, how did that money go? So, you watch it in order to learn what not to do? Of course. Mm. If, if I always tell people, if you avoid failure, surely you are going the yeah, success route. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of all the books you've read and you've been reading extensively, can you give me the top five, the ones which were most impactful for you? I think it's the Bible, the first one. Mm -hmm. I like King Speci Solomon. Yes, specifically um, Ecclesiastes and, and, and <laughs> Proverbs. You know? <laughs> I know, we're together there. And uh, then, which yeah. other one? Um, and also, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and some of his series. But mm. I can see that it's just expansion of... Yeah. I think the first three are original. Yeah. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cashflow Quadrant, and, and Rich Dad's uh, investing. Investment. Yeah, yeah. The investing or investment. The Those three. Repeat. The rest is just expansion, expansion. And, and, and duplication <laughs> yeah, of the same you message. Really will pick that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the wisdom from the Jewish wisdom, how mm -hmm. they do businesses. The Jewish phenomenon. Yes. Okay, I have yeah. that book, yes. And then the seven habits mm -hmm. um, of highly effective of people highly effective Stephen people. Coffey Stephen Coffey. Coffey I love that one yes mm -hmm. and then the richest man in Babylon ah the classic yes. the foundation to all of them <laughs> yes sir. okay yeah all right have you read Ramachang's uh, all of book? them book yeah two of them yeah. yeah the one that I really grabbed me was the uh, magic of perseverance yes the, perseverance. the other ones about visions of grandeur i didn't get it it's, it's amazing as well when you look at it because i think um i once had him spoke a bit about what he wrote in the book mm. so i was uh, so keen to know what is in the book mm. after i read the major what do you think that those books are about I think visions of grandeur, not not the the <laughs> other one. Is it grand grandeur? Huh? Illusions of grandeur. Yes, like that. yes. That one did I? No, I didn't read that one. No. Yes. That two that thick one. ones, two but thick similar one. title. Yes. It's one and two. Yeah. But anyway, let's let's talk about, about uh, financial literacy, which is really the thrust of our conversation yeah. today. Uh, first of all, how how's the level of financial literacy in Botswana? Yeah, I think we are. Um, they, they, we always say there's a first world, third world, fourth world. I don't know if a layman understands what we are talking about. There's a book um, where it, which talks about um, from third world to the first world um, that I read on how. What is that? Um, there's a country that used to be in the third world, they went to the first world. Mm. Mostly, we talk about the mindset. Singapore. Something. Singapore, thank mm, you. Mm. Singapore, the story is a thick book like that. Maybe Dubai. Yes, like, no, uh, Singapore. The Emirates as well. I think it's Singapore how they thought to attack the economy and move from third world to the first world is to touch the minds and the education system mm. to change how people think, how people look at things. So, when we take it to Botswana, you find that most of us come from a place of lack, a place of um, average. I think most of us, 80% are coming from a middle income family. So a lot of things that we learn is to see someone in a family, one or two is a breadwinner, mm. and we learn the money language from them. Whether mm. it's a good thing or a bad thing, you think that's the right thing because he's the one providing, he's being able. Mm. Maybe they are able because they're into debt, maybe they're able because they're hustling, whatever they're hustling, and you are never are sure to say no, but this is how you create wealth, this is how you use money. Mm. Because I always tell people, the problem that we have as a society is that we think we know how to use money because we have money. And 
you, Mr. Mohobi, heavy medicine doesn't mean you know what the medicine is used for. Mm. So you need an expert. Some people are receiving salaries and they think they know how to use salaries because there's a deduction for school fees, this, 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 this. And they will work for the next 13 to 50 years. Doing this, you got into work at 15, you're going to retire at 60, and you're still doing the same cycle. There's no <laughs> education that is um, yeah. put in your mind on how to use this. So I'll say the level of financial literacy in Botswana is still growing but I wouldn't say I'll give it a rate of 6 out of 10. Mm -hmm. We are getting there, but we still have a lot of work to have these people and learn and relearn mm -hmm. um, how to... Well, what is the one way. thing that we need to unlearn that you think is troubling us the most? Poverty mindset. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who introduced it to us? Because we've never really been terribly poor as Botswana. I think it's, 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 it's change of currency introduction into our world because we used to do better trading. Mm. So now no one taught us this transition. We mm -hmm. just assume we know mm -hmm. because you find that um, you get a loan and you ask someone, why did you get a loan? Because a bank came to us saying we can get a loan and build a house. Now our aim has always been accumulation. What are we accumulating? Why are we accumulating? It is always um, an issue and you don't understand how money or a debt can be used to create wealth, you always go the bad debt way because a company came to say, get a personal loan. What for? For how long? From there, we find ourselves in this debt trap, mm -hmm. like Robert Kiyosaki will say. But you find that um, this poverty mindset also becomes from lack of knowledge. Like I say, one of the things why I read is to remove all the stupidity in my mind, if there's ever <laughs> one, so that I can converse in anything and learn a lot. Mm. Um, that's why even I subscribe to Vusi I like the way he look at things in terms of... Smart um, man. He's a very smart man. Mm. How a traditional individual can change the mind to become a first world thinker. Mm. So we need to change that so that we can understand that money can change the way you look at things and also the, the things you look at will also change. Yeah. Yeah. Wealth distribution in Botswana, have you studied it and what are your findings? Yeah, um, there's an um, inverse proportion to the wealth distribution because when you talk about wealth distribution, you talk about the rich and the poor. Um, so it becomes that the rich keeps getting richer and the poor keeps getting poorer. And I always say the only thing to change that is to get knowledge and understand how wealth works. You know, the good book says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Thank you. My mm. people perish for lack of Because we don't know, but we find that there's an opportunity to get into property. There's an opportunity to get into business. We have never, ever taught by anyone from my family to get into business. I need someone to tell me, so I'll always revert back. But someone who is always rich, because they have business, they know. When I calculate the return on investment, I need to take my phone, ta -ta 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 -ta. oh no, let's sign the deal. Now mm. I need to do what? Go back, think, get a loan from the bank. That process is delaying mm. the seller. The mm. seller will give it to the nearest mm. person. So mm. we need to come in conjunction with how to create... In other words, we have to be place ourselves in a position to execute on deals or to, um, to, to say yes to deals. Yes. Most of the time we say, let me advise myself. Let me go back and talk to my wife. Yeah. Because you haven't studied, you have studied about it. deals. Tesla uh, CEO Elon Musk says, never ever say no to a deal that can make money, even if you don't know how. Mm -hmm. Just say yes and go learn about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think most of the things I, I, I follow and learn is the people from surroundings or near to me to show that it's possible. So you see how he does his things. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, is it ideal for for wealth to be equally distributed? Isn't that bordering on socialism or communism? It's not really ideal. There's going to always be some people. That's why I always say we can't all be entrepreneurs. You can't all be millionaires or billionaires. But you need to upskill yourself from a certain level to another level. So the problem with other people is that they still use the same knowledge from January to December, 20 years, 10 years to come, 15 years to come and they don't put anything new in their mind. There's a quote I got from um, Tudor Bismarck. He says, never ever go to bed with the same knowledge that you woke up with. 
and I make sure that I, I write it in my, mm. my room to know that, no, 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 before I even go to bed, even if I go to Facebook, follow certain individual, read an article, let me have something different in my head before I go to bed. Okay, you want to talk to us also about Motelo because oh, my everybody friend. thinks they know Motelo. Yeah. Um, you have a book on it? Yes, I have a book. It's called Understanding Motelo Stock Fell and Crowdfunding. Mm. Um, it has like two years now. I'm um, just been selling so much, so mm. much. Yeah. So what, what what is the biggest learning in that book? Is that people appreciate Montello and I think they have been fearing and taking decision based on the past mistakes of other people. So if Ramakho has been um, in Montello and is telling you, can I go to No, the, the biggest problem is the treasurer running away with the money. Hey, hey, so. Around about December. <laughs> around about December. They yeah, can't right? reach them. They change their phones. <laughs> <laughs> so that has been the problem. That has been the issue. But you'll find that Baton don't have a problem with joining. It's how and who will be managing. And then also you find that the as Baton have been taught to save. The problem is the transition from saving and making that money work for you. Or making from someone's. saving to investing? Yes, that transition is a very difficult transition for us. Because I can tell you to save. First, some of us save without a purpose. How many other things are there? I've been around for a while. Three billion a year advertising. So people are going to ask you this. But they may have a purpose or okay, no, this money I want to buy a plot, or I want to buy a car, or a combi. You know, just giving it a purpose, hmm. so that you know that money is not for this. Whatever mm. opportunities come to allow us, our academy, our bushes, and that purpose. Mm. But we find that most of them they get bare money. That's why about to buy a new house, we have two hundred pool. Let me allow people to buy. Mm. That's why we must do more. Oh, in the house, Muhammad. How long can we have two hundred pool? Two thousand ten, twenty thousand ten. Who are Yeah. Because of we do not allow them. Do you know that in one example, I think it was Jesus Christ who mm. described the failure to invest as wickedness. Yes. Can you explain why it's wickedness? <laughs> I have a tough time explaining to people that failure to invest is wickedness. I think, like like you 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 mentioned earlier, my people perish for lack of knowledge. When you read the Bible, I always say use different versions: mm. um, Message Bible, New King James, whatever that we have, so you can understand the verse what it says. Mm. It means that if you have knowledge about something and you don't do it. That's wicked. Mm. And a lot of people may know and ignore. And it's like we read the Bible where it suits us, not where we should learn. Mm -hmm. So you just go and quote whatever you want to quote so that you can give a reason for your stupidity. Mm. So a lot of people use reasonings that will fulfill, like issue of, 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 of alcohol. People will say, no, Jesus said we should drink alcohol, but there's karata. <laughs> so it, they would always use that portion what did the Bible say before that and after that mm, they mm. wouldn't want to get in the conversation like that mm. so issues of money I think money in the message Bible is um, I forgot how many times it was mentioned mm. I wrote in my diary when I was um, using the electronic the issue device. of money and finances and resources is mentioned more than any other any issue. other issue more than two thousand references yes, even more than, more than love and faith yes and even more than salvation salvation when i teach that people go crazy yeah yeah and and you, and you wonder why mm. because our life is an economy there's a lot of trade and exchange mm -hmm. that is going to happen um other than the gold and the copper nickel and the diamonds that's still trade and it involves transactions and money so that's why you find even the Bible elaborating it a bit more. So issues of Montello, that's something that's dear to my heart. Um, and the reason why I wrote a book is to show but that it's possible to use Montello to create wealth. Mm -hmm. To use Montello to say we use Montello as a consuming avenue. We always do January to December. It's like we are January to December. December we are going to do it. So if we are going to do it, we are going to you find yourself this nothing you can write home about. Mm. But when I'm not told, say, "Unzo mumotelo ngo kumpio no wa graduate ngo invest unzo mumotelo." Well, the question that arises from that is, how can we leverage on motel? Yeah, thank you. That is why now I I have 
took it upon myself to see that people learn about Montsalo and know about Montsalo. First, I wrote that book, which tells you that, you know, you can have the same people who are... I, I, I remember one time I had a show at Caps FM with Swift um, for over two years. Mm. And we met a group of individuals that bought from one retail store goods of food worth 280,000. Mm. 380,000. 80, yeah. And towards December, they'll go to that GSS ground pack there, get their food. And one lady got away with 22,000 worth of food just for it, not like a regular tax shop. I had an Aruhama Sikali Dizala in Then I thought, okay. We have been taught generosity to give and give, but do we know for when you do this for consecutive, like I say, there's nothing all right home mm. about. Why it's, not it's like own destroying the, the wall? Store? Yeah, why mm. not own the retail store? Mm. What, what's wrong with that? Then mm. you buy from the same store. Then, like the Jewish system, let the money circulate amongst us mm. because they don't have that knowledge. The only knowledge they have is to eat. Mm. Let us survive. So they society. find themselves in that avenue. You can have a Montello to buy cars. You can have a Montello to go into property. You can have a Montello to go into a franchise store or start even your grocery store. What is stopping us from doing that is because we lack In other knowledge. words, that 380,000 pula disappears in the next, within a week. Within, within a week. Or within a few days. After you struggle to save it from January to December. And even this money, sometimes they just put it in the bank without any interest or exchanging it at least to grow it. Mm. So they, I always say there are three M's of money. How to make money, how to manage money, how to multiply money. Mm. So they always know how to make. To mm. manage and multiply is another transition that we need to teach people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, we can just always say, we're just making this money, put it in a bank. Uh, so how can the Motelo people manage and multiply the money? Yeah. Like I'm saying, there are so many factors or avenues that you can put your money into. Mm. Um, for example, talking about property, we can look into making a cash flow. Every month we contribute. That builds a cash flow. After the cash flow, you can actually approach, you buy an empty plot, approach a financing institution with that cash flow mm -hmm. and get a loan to finance that to build a mount raise, a commercial property, start a shopping complex or whatever. Then from there, that money is going to come as a rental every month. Then and at the end of the year, you get the, your, your dividends, mm. not necessarily coming out of your pocket. That is um, what um, Robert Kiyosaki would say, using other people's money to make your money. Okay. So our problem is we always want to use our money. That is why we'll never be rich. The rich use people's money. Like I always say, banks don't have money. People have money in the bank. Mm -hmm. So the banks will use people's money to create their own money. Hence why money banks have money mm. now. So, so are you saying to me whoever uses other people's money will be rich? No one who uses someone's money is not rich. Mm -hmm. I'm yet to hear someone saying, I've used someone's money, I'm not rich. Mm. Maybe you can help me no. with their name. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. yeah. So, so, so l l let's simplify it. You have a motello, you've put that, you have, let's say for argument's sake, for ease of... Calculation five hundred thousand. Yes, sir. Let's leverage that. Let's. What can we do specifically to grow it, and how? Um, let, let Let me give an example that is is is, is evident in money. I have a Montsello. It's called Finfree Montsello Investment. Finfree. Yes. Mm. We started in twenty twenty. We are a group of fifty. So every month we'll pop out a thousand. That means around fifty thousand pool. So the first year we raised 600,000. Mm. And we said, no, the, let not this money stay at the bank without giving us any return. So every two months we'll buy two caps and put them in the rank. Mm. So we find that this money, um, at the end of the year, 600,000 has been generating money through caps. And a cap, uh, averagely on a monthly basis, will give you 6,000 to 8,000 pool. Mm. So if you have 10 caps at the end of the year, then you are sure that you can make 80,000 to 100,000 per month now. After you bought, I think we bought around eight caps in the first year. Mm. So that money is not just sitting. We have put it in an asset that generates income. That's mm -hmm. why you are always saying there's a difference between cash and cash flow. Don't let cash stay there. Stagnant. Cash flow is far more important than Thank cash. You say. So cash flow, I always say, what is it in physics? Currency, something that flows. Yes. So we need to have currency flowing mm -hmm. in the cash. Mm -hmm. So let cash flow. Don't have cash and say, you know, I have money. You have money, but don't have cash flow. Let there be cash flow, like rental. So do you think the duty of, of an average investor is to turn the cash into, into cash, cash flow? flow? That's the main objective. Mm -hmm. They have so many ways of doing that, but that's the main objective. Mm. Yeah. 
What is wealth creation then? Uh, wealth creation, like I'm saying, is accumulating income generating assets mm -hmm. that will either create you what you call capital gain, that is to say, I bought a property at 500,000. I developed it, now it's valued at 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. There's a capital gain in that. Or buy a plot, let it gain value. Um, I think CBD 20 years ago, there was a lot of bush here, or 30 years ago. Tell no one me thought. about it, dude. It's, uh, <laughs> even, even when we started clearing the ground here, it's, <laughs> which is what, seven years ago. You yeah. know? Yeah. So if, so if you're an investor, you may look forward. They are always looking in the reports, reading newspapers, mm -hmm. national development plan, the next 12 years in Habron, in Palabe, Francis Town. There are people right now who are buying land in Palabe because Palabe is the next big thing, mm -hmm. because they've seen the development that are coming. So that is the main objective of wealth creation. You are like, okay, fine. Right now, plots in Palabe are ranging between 150 to 200. I know the moment they put an a, a airport here in a university again or a high school or a mall, I'm sure this thing will be now 400,000. Look how G North mm. went. It's exploded overnight. Overnight, right? Mm. But tell me, 10 years ago, would you even thought of buying a plot there? Mm. So it, it was Massimo Abad. Mm. And people now start to see, okay, no, here's where we are going. So I will say wealth creation is accumulating um, assets that have value and mm. they will create um, income for you. Okay. Yeah. Can you settle this argument once and for all? Stocks versus property. Which one, <laughs> which one is better for wealth creation? Both. I would say both because I'm into both. And I've seen, uh, I've seen how each one of them perform. They have their own characteristics. And property depends. They can be a bad property. They can be a good property. They can be a good stock and can be a, a bad stock that you buy. You know, there are a lot of people complaining about a certain company that they bought shares on it. Others even use a loan mm. with anticipation that they will get high dividends. Mm. That wasn't so because they didn't do the actual check. Like I wrote in the book, there are certain things or characters you should look when you are buying a stock. What sector is in it? Mm. I, I, I shared in my social media during lockdown, said, you know, the fact that the government even went ahead and said there are special sectors during lockdown shows you where to invest post the COVID. Special economic zones? Special economic zones. That it was lockdown, they, all the economic sectors were closed, but there are a few that were called special attack, and these people should go to work. Mm. And that shows you that these people or these sectors are bulletproof to whatever pandemic that will come, and that is the direction you should invest into. Mm. When you talk about finances, we can't move without money. We can't. When you talk about transportation, how do people move from one point to another? Like I was saying, we don't have equal distribution of wealth. Yeah. Others have cars, others don't. So relate that to the two then. Right. So when you talk about the stock, the stock is easier to access and you can get a small portion. You can mm. put 10,000 there. Mm. But it's very... Um, hard for you to take 10,000 and start a property project unless you start in a very um, unknown village to mm. buy a plot for 10,000 pool. Assuming, so, assuming I agree with you that they are both good, mm. how should one then allocate their portfolio in terms of distributing between the two? Yeah, I think that's where now my daily job is. We need to come and diagnose you and see your financial status and health. That's, because that's assuming averages, although you hate the word average, from what, <laughs> from what I gathered, you, you dislike being considered average. But let's deal with an average uh, business person. Mm. Mm. What is the allocation? What percentage property, what percentage stocks and why? I, I don't want to really have to choose, mm -hmm. I think I will look at to your, your vision as a business person and also how much of money you have at that particular man. What is your wealth accumulated, um, uh, what do you call, sheet mm -hmm. to see, okay, fine, in terms of asset, you have this and this and this and this, you can do to go this direction. Then it will help us to also know what type of stock you want, the unit trust, the shares, and where do you want them? Is it in locally? outside internationally so i, I think it's, it's a debatable thing like you say yeah i should settle it mm. i don't want to settle it here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe it can never be settled <laughs> maybe mm. yeah because we've seen people succeed on all of on, them all of them yeah. right yeah now crowdfunding is crowdfunding the same as motel it's, it's a motel that went to a private school say that again it's a motel that went to a private school mm -hmm. yeah many 
same model, different names. Mm -hmm. You find that there's a specific color about crowdfunding, like the word itself. Those are two ways describing what is happening. Mm. It is crowd funding something. Mm -hmm. So you find that um, there's a project, let's say you want to build a hospital. Then this hospital is worth 150 million. And then we are like, okay, fine. Who has idle money to come and invest in this project? So you want to crowd um, this people crowd and fund this project mm -hmm. so that you can make money and start to pay these people their interest or their dividends. Mm -hmm. So similarly to Botswana Stock Exchange, you listing, you are like calling up people to come and buy shares so you can fund other projects for growth. So crowdfunding and Montalo, the similarities that Montalo also come together for a certain purpose, but it was unregulated, unregulated in fact. Mm. For different things. So you find that there's a purpose. Yes. You go to the same crowdfunding, something that is done at an international level for a certain purpose. Once that is reached, the good thing about it is that now you stop contributing. Mm. You start the project, then the project give best mm. uh, give back people mm -hmm. their money. But with Montello, it can be continuous, but depends okay. on what. Yeah. Well, they keep blowing the money, <laughs> keep destroying the wall, <laughs> like you said. Blowing, so, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. And and now with crowdfunding, have you seen it work and succeed in Botswana? In Botswana, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I've pioneered it. Because mm -hmm. we raised 1.2 million to invest in various things. We also bought a farm mm -hmm. as well. So I, I think I've pioneered it to test drive it. Okay. So I know it, it has succeeded because I was also benchmarking in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it something that is legislated? Does it come under NBFIRA? Yeah, NBFIRA needs to, to not really regulate. At the moment you raise the money, as long as you are in um, having a, a, a portfolio, because we came it as a material. Mm. But like I'm saying, we are funding to go into this project mm -hmm. coming with this. So it's like, kind of like when now you do crowdfunding with different people that you don't know, that's now becomes crowdfunding, which NBFIRA needs to come on board mm -hmm. to help you with. Um, Does NBFIRA come on board? Uh, in other words, there are there guidelines as to where they come in? Do they come on board when an amount exceeds X mm -hmm. or they come on board when the complexity reaches a certain level? How does it work? And before, at the moment you start to collect money for a transactional activity, that's where they come on board, not mm. depending on the amount or whatever. Mm. The moment you pull people's money and you, some of those people you don't know, we, they need to regulate or among the ranga madia abato akukai, but that's why you find they are not much into mental because mental like what type of insaneing, but with them account this is the purpose. Everyone moment se loka kubala no this is it. Kuna le maina kwa nyanya kema hosma manke ra hosma manke salami ing ing ing. So that is why right now we don't really talk much about crowdfunding, but mental even mental are not regulated. It's just that. Um, you need to open an account. Even at the bank, when you open an account, they say bring just the constitution, which is a guiding thing. Mm -hmm. There haven't been any regulator authority for, for Mitel or crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. All right. You say Batona should really take advantage of opportunities, including leveraging debt. Mm. Tell us what, what are your thoughts and specifically how do you mean? Yeah. I think, like I said um, earlier, we, we, we are a very disadvantaged society. We come from families of low-income families. Very few come privileged to have millionaires or millions. Um, so you find that there is availability of funds in the financial institutions. Mm -hmm. So one thing I studied very much and wanted to understand was that. People why is this thing introduced if people mm. we need to find that people are not taught about debt management, that mm. there's a good debt and a bad debt. Mm -hmm. So the only debt that we get, they perish and move not even to bring money back to you. So after I realized that oh there is a good debt, so I can actually get the money, buy a property, 
and this property pay these loans and also there's something remaining for me. Oh, then clearly that is good. Mm. We can leverage on this thing on creation of wealth. Mm. There's no someone or anyone who's rich who doesn't have debt. They use people's money to make their money. Mm. And clearly, by so doing, most financial institutions allow that. You find that a lot of people, they have access to that and they tell you what are the requirements that you need to put in place to get that. So I always say, let's let debt work for you mm. because debt was meant to make our lives easier. It's mm. the people who make their life harder by taking the bad debt mm -hmm. that you shouldn't take a debt that won't bring you money. That's a bad debt. It mm. should be. You don't ask for, is this a good debt, a bad debt? Mm. Don't take any debt that won't bring you money. Mm -hmm. An asset is something that brings you money mm. and liability is something that takes you Money out of from you. Whether it's a car, it's a house, whatever. Mm. As long as it takes money out of your pocket, mm. that's a liability. As long as it brings you money, mm. that's an asset. Mm. So we need to look in these two things and take a decision to say, look, um, when I talk about assets, I'm talking about one, two, three. And also look at how those things are getting, uh, how those things are getting value in the future. Like you are into property, you'll attest to that. There are a lot of people who are uh, saying they are property owners, they have mattress, but these mattress are taken from them because someone got a loan mm. and the rental from it, that is they 5, didn't 000. do their numbers. They didn't Thank do their you. numbers. They didn't do that because no one taught them about numbers. Someone mm. said, No, if you buy mattress, you mm. can be able mm. to pay it back. Mm. And you're like, okay, let me do the transaction. You get a loan and mm. you are like, oh rental I'm gonna get is six thousand, but the monthly installment is ten thousand. Where's the four thousand coming mm. from? Mm. You need to pop it up. Then you shouldn't have Done, done it that. in the first place. Now you are going to tell us that property is not a good thing, mm. but you are telling us your experience, mm. not that is the truth. Yeah. Well, you referred to the good book earlier as yeah. one of your favorite books, but the book, the good book says that uh, that the you know the borrower is a slave to the lender. Yes. Um, how do we overcome that? Because it's also a psychological and religious obstacle that a lot of people have. Yeah. Um, I think it was T.D. Jakes when he was sharing his, um, how he accumulated wealth. Um, and he said, which I really liked, he said, when the Bible talks about that, it was addressing the bad debt because you're going to always be the slave. Mm -hmm. But still again, the same debt can change your life because you have money that is coming in. Your rental is 20000 you are paying the bank 10000 you are left with 10000 I'm not a slave at that particular moment. Mm. He was sharing how he built Potter, um, the, Potter, the, 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 Potter, the Potter's house. The Potter's house. It's huge. I've been it's there twice. Very huge. It's yes. massive. And yeah. some of the small houses um, are run for the pastors. Mm. That he, he wasn't using any debt from anyone after he started with a very big debt to start something, one of his business in production, and it made so much money that he built that mm. debt free. Mm. So I was like, oh, so you, you unlocked your wealth by debt. Mm -hmm. So clearly that's where you should start mm -hmm. and understand that how can debt be leveraged um, and also understand when you are saying you are being a, a slave to a lender, what do we mean by that? That's mm -hmm. why I had to put two mm -hmm. distinctions that there's a bad debt and a good debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you don't think that uh, pastors need to be taught these things for them to help the flock? Because me, for the, the longest time, I was te terrified. Mm. Correction, I was petrified <laughs> of the idea of debt. Yes. Uh, because it's something that I learned from the pulpit was bad news. Yeah. And uh, I read it also from the good book. So don't you think we need to educate the educators and the pastors? Mm. And we do, we do, we do. Um, or perhaps they can call us to come and share. Mm -hmm. So we also have experiential knowledge in what we are talking about to say, look, I'm talking about the mantras that I bought. This is what's happening. Mm -hmm. This is how things are working. Sometimes they say experience is the best the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you understand that knowledge by seeing it happening. So maybe, like I always say, I always ask people, when was the first time you had the word debt? By who? Saying what? Mm -hmm. Because that will set your mindset about that. Mm -hmm. If someone says, hey, I got this already, mm -hmm. that thing clicks to is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And when you see it, you can see it. 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 So these are two different people talking about the same thing, different experiences. So it depends who you are listening to who you are learning from, and how you are taking that and knowledge. And who your teachers are. And who your teachers are. 
Mm. So you shouldn't listen to each and every one. Like I'm saying, I took a decision to be a learner to the books. I, I, I know I can have T.D. Jake's mind in Botswana by reading his book to understand why is he where he is and how did he get there. I like biographies because they will tell you a lot wow. and how people grew, Absolutely. the struggles, and how they went where they are. And that yeah. will tell you, like I like this, this um, Bayern Moon player, Sadio Mane. That guy's biography. Said you? Said you That guy's biography is so touching, so African because he comes from a family he used to play football in the streets until he started to say, you know, there was a trial. He gone so he went actually to pick some litters in some neighborhood to get the money to pay for the registration for the trials. And he won the trials, mm. went to Liverpool. Today is one of the world classes. Mm. He went to buy money right now. And he's building hospitals mm. at his... Um, at his home? Uh, yes. Because he's paid in hard currency. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, all right. Um, we're talking largely to entrepreneurs and, and there are basic mistakes that they make at the yeah. startup stage. As a financial advisor, what, what are the basic mistakes that young entrepreneurs make and what's your advice for, as to how to avoid them? I think the first thing is to accumulate assets that are beyond your financial health. Um, mm. So you find that someone, the moment they make the first man, they want a big car. Mm. Um, so you want to have yeah, this, this big thing. car syndrome. It's a problem. <laughs> the big car syndrome. That's the first thing because you want to be known that I make money. You know, and for you to buy just a fuel conservative car more so that the fuel prices are going high, you are like, but, but Larry, I need to a big car. They need to see me and see what but, I'm but doing. But you find half the time they are not, 90% yeah. of them, they don't even think, think about, about you. you. They, they don't think, think you exist. <laughs> <laughs> so you find that these people are thinking about that. Number two, I think it's expanding early rather than staying where you are and understand the market. Like we want to open office everywhere because there is money coming or you want a contract. And later on, the moment that contract is done, you already committed yourself in certain things, buying cars, everything. Even some use debt mm. now. That's where it will turn into a bad debt. Don't or grow your business when it's not supposed to be grown. Everything has a season. Mm. There's a season for everything. You need to learn. I understand think you need a lot of wisdom to determine the right time because yes. it's desirable to grow as well. Yeah, mm. that's the thing. We desire to grow but know when to grow. Mm. Like I was talking about Vosit and Beko, you were talking about scaling, how businesses die because of scaling. Mm. Certain businesses die because of scaling. I, I know you'll remember the Nokia story. Mm. They didn't scale but they lost Mm. Others were scaling. So it is mm. both, like you say, it's mm. desirable to, to scale. But mm. at what point? Mm. You cannot say, when companies are saying, we are introducing uh, a key, key mm. padless mm. Um, phones, and you are saying, mm. that's why the CEO said, we don't know what we did, mm. but we were caught off guard. Mm. They passed us. Today, Nokia is no longer doing much of the smartphones because a are lot they of still it, in existence. I don't know. Where's mm. Blackberry, for example? Yeah, I think it's been wiped out. It, it I don't think the they exist. And there mm. was a period it was. Mm. Someone thought about how to take them out of the market, mm. but they didn't, they didn't adapt. They didn't adapt. Mm. Innovation was too fast for them. So mm. it was their time to grow, but they didn't grow. Mm. So they died. There are those that they try to upscale faster, they die as well. So you need to mm. leverage. But uniquely, Botswana, Botswana businesses, what is your. What is your observation as an author, as a you know, commentator? So, so, so the key thing is that we don't have professionals in our businesses, first and foremost. Mm. Um, you find that you think you can do accounting, you think you can do videography, you think you can do um, HR, you think you can do... And also, the key big things is hiring your relatives mm -hmm. and failing to manage them. Mm -hmm. And let's go to because they take advantage of I know they just, they they just it's yeah. my uncle, it's my and they father. just spend the whole day warming chairs warming doing chairs. nothing. And, yeah. and the moment you say don't do that, they keep quiet, it's gonna be a home issue. Mm. You even call by your extra relatives that are extended to come and say, What's I am Those are some of the mistakes that mm. people do. Mm. Secondly, no lack of professional. You find that an average company, I think Forbes actually been exposed, they don't have a website. You don't know what they do. 
Number two, those companies don't have an, a mere legal team or a mere accounting services. Someone mm -hmm. just come, money comes, go to the bank. That's why BRS has a lot of work to do mm. because these guys owe a lot of tax. Mm -hmm. You don't know what, how to treat, treat taxation. Mm. All the money that comes, you think is yours. No, no, no. You need an accountant to teach you because that's not your area of speciality. Mm. You need a legal person to tell you how to do contract because that's not your key area of speciality. So I think we need to look into having the right professional because those people will help you to know when to scale and yeah. when not because you alone that's why how you miss it okay yeah here's your chance now to blow your own trumpet a little bit yeah with all this knowledge and all this learning what are the accomplishments what is your company doing i think it's your time to do what is i call a shameless plug <laughs> tell us about the books and your growth yeah um like i said my my, I have, my vision is just the one to teach and educate Botswana about entrepreneurship, personal development, and financial literacy because it's something that um, I've seen how impactful it is to our downfall. Uh, so my company is doing wealth management, we do trainings, we do um, team buildings, we do one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, and also we coach men sellers on how to turn whatever they are doing, um, which is consuming mostly on how to own whatever they are consuming, how to create wealth or look into other views or other streams of incomes that they may leverage on because mm -hmm. you can't keep money from January to December doing nothing. And while someone is using them to make money out of it. it makes so, no sense. Uh, at all. Because the so, bank that you keep depositing your money in is using it to grow. Yes. When now you are stagnating you or, know, or regressing. Yeah, so one of the things that I do is to learn much about, that's why I'm into financial investments. I'm learning a lot about currencies, cryptos, forex trading, which has been making rounds around. Mm. A lot of people don't know what's happening, what is it in the forex yeah. industry and the so forex forth. Forex I'm trying to avoid <laughs> at the moment. You shouldn't. No, I'll come back to you. Don't worry. You shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. um, that's how banks make money. I mm. can tell you one of the commercial banks here make $2 billion out of forex trading. They actually have what you call CFA, mm. um, who looks into the charts. Mm. They make sure that we change our money to this. Then from there, they get it back. They make money out of it. Mm. That's why I'm saying my banks don't have money. They use people's money to make their money. So mm. all the savings, if we have like yeah. 30 billion So your savings. company has grown. Tell us about its, its status. It's grown to how many employees? We have three employees right now. Oh, okay. Yes. So you're keeping it small. You're keeping it small because most of the work that we do doesn't require much of... Um, so you do a lot of subcontracting yes. or, or, or rather uh, co collaboration? Collaboration and do like, if you offer psychosocial, you need to have mm -hmm. someone who has that um, experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we do mostly is doing trainings, we do team buildings, counseling, financial, look, talk about debt management, mm -hmm. talk about investment, what are some of the investment opportunities like USA, property, stock market, mm -hmm. what is your risk appetite as an individual, where are some of the things or your goal mm -hmm. for retirement? Because so it's mainly a consultancy. You will say that there's mm -hmm. a bit of that. I will say that's another branch, but I won't mm -hmm. agree that it's mainly oh, okay. a consultancy well, it's, because it's there's got a, a strong consultancy component. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. you consult on tax also. Uh, have you acquired expertise on tax? Yeah, I did tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you believe. Uh, the popular saying that it's good to avoid tax, but it's terrible to evade it. Yeah, that, that's clear. Uh -huh. Yeah. You so can't. do you help people avoid it and not evade it? Yeah. It's very easy and it's legal. Can you give us examples <laughs> briefly <laughs> as, we, as we conclude? May, may, may I, I, I request to avoid that now? Okay. Yeah. You want to come back and talk specifically at another time about that? Yeah. What about the, the taxation systems, what to do, mm -hmm. evasions? What is legal, what is not legal. Are so you forth. telling me out there there are people who are just slaving away, paying tax when they shouldn't be? Yeah. There are a lot. Just because of ignorance? Yeah. Or because of not having someone like you? Yeah. Like I was saying, typical example, there are people right now, um, I think it was last year when the tax brackets for employees was changed. Mm. I thought, um, yeah, last year, uh, 1st of April 2021. Mm. And you find that a lot of people didn't get that thing to the small companies. They still tax people with the previous Because it was moved from 3,000 to 4,000. Thank you. So mm. someone 3,000 maybe still tax, someone 4,000 still tax with the 3,000 bracket. Mm. So if you're going to work for over 15 years, it means you're going to work and owe that 5%. Mm. It is when you want your retirement 
pension mm. and biara says no wa re kolota ra bo re jantsi ke duela tetse ntso e duela ba ten the wrong bracket mm -hmm. when they look at your income in tsetsen they take half of your they take half of your retirement that's mm -hmm. why where i come in that avoid that it's painful mm -hmm. that you see to se tswa o re thara than o se tsukile nna ha zoro kwa go nkhol because i always say our job is is we come to you we diagnose you we give you a prescription so we can work with it whether you think you are sick or not come for consultation so you can search because even today, Mr. Mako, you, you need go to, to go a medical exam yeah, every now and then. Yes, yeah. you know, you need to just go check your eyes, mm. check your body temperature. You may not see that something that you are eating mm. will, in the next five years, be harmful in a certain part or body part if, in you. Yeah, so you need to you avoid it. Away, yeah. You know, so it's not like you should go to a doctor only when you are sick. You mm. can just come for financial check, mm -hmm. so you can be told. Uh -uh. Or high carry or accumulate that liability tab. Or no, I can only accumulating something. Let, let's let's touch briefly on the B word. It's, mm. It appears the B word budgeting is yes. not something that but sits well with Botswana, mm. or they are not interested in it. <laughs> what can we do to really get people to to like the B word? Um, hey, you know that one talks. It's it's it's, it's a bit of a habit. You know, you need to build a habit of budgeting. Because we will talk or not. Again, even if they can come um, over 10 consultants, they will say the same thing. Please budget, do this, write your budget, put your phone there. Mm. But until you learn and take a decision to do a budgeting, it won't work for you because you need to have that habit. But every now and then when money comes, budget for that money. Because I always say budget for the money you're expecting, not when the money is there because there's a lot of emotional changes in your Body when money is there. That's why I'm talking about men. Like, remember, we won't be talking about those that break by enter. Even mm. the ones here in your team, two or three of them may not come to work because by two men. If I'm not doing that, I'll lose out of four or five million. Go go on to their relationship or emotions with on them. Onta mo. Onta mo. Yeah, I'm going to go onta mo. I two will limit that. So, can you budget in your motor home? There's an average um, ratio they always use. They say 50% needs 30%. Um, savings, no, once 20% savings. You may no, have, have swapped, I've swapped those. Yeah, you can it's swap It's 20% luxuries yeah. and 30% savings can, and investments. Y yes, yeah. you can actually save. But you can actually increase. 50, 40, 10. Because the Templeton method is that you push it to 50%. Yes, yeah. so you can actually see whichever works for you, right? Mm. So if people don't appreciate that and choose the some that will work for them, we mm. can't force them to that. You can take it to the to the to water the, to the water, but you cannot force it so to, to drink. drink. So yeah. that's why we are saying that one is more of a habit. I can tell you to read this book, but I can't force you to read it mm. because I wanted you to pick something from. Yeah, but let's talk solutions. How do we get over that? How do we get Botswana or just business people in general or mm. whoever is watching this to accept? the need for budgeting, that you cannot be financially successful or even survive mm. without budgeting. Yeah. How do we preach that message and get it, make it to pass to, into people? Yeah, how do we inculcate it? Yeah, mm. I think some things need experience and um, showing of results to show them that on a monthly basis, after I tithe, this is how much I save without fail. Mm -hmm. um, so you can practice the same thing. But like I'm saying, it's all upon someone to say, okay, let me start saving. Because even saving, you need to put a purpose to that saving. To say, this is savings for emergency, this is saving for buying a car, this is savings for my wedding, this is saving to buy a property mm. or to do whatever. Because you don't put meaning to it. Any now and then when you find a need to spend, you think about that un Unbudgeted, unbudgeted expense. expense. So like, oh, I have money. You mm. always have that at the back of my mind. I have mm. money. Come so when I'm talking to someone, the house I look at, I'm looking at it. It's a rare. I wonder. Can you find yourself accumulating things that you don't need? That's why we have things like impulse buying. There are people right now they can go to a mall without money. They say they are window shopping. And mm. you ask yourself, what are you shopping in the window? Mm. You know, because they want to know where their next table will be spent at. And are you condemning that behavior? It's very, 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 very unacceptable. I can flip the coin on that and say yeah. they're planning ahead. They know that they need new clothes at some point, so they're planning ahead. Why are you always accumulating things that don't add value to you or bring you money? Why can't you accumulate things that are you not supposed money? to look good? You should. To mm. a certain, not every month mm -hmm. to say, 
when money comes, you spend. When I give you 200,000, you already go drink. And you mm. say, I shouldn't feel nice. Yeah. I think it's, 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 a, it's a thing of to say using the ratio. Yeah. If you have a ratio and you have a goal and mission to achieve, that can guide you on how you spend your money. These people, you say you watched in a show uh, called how I, 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 how I Blew It. Yeah. You think they'd be where they were crying like they're crying if they budgeted? No. They, should, they wouldn't. So budgeting is a defense mechanism. It's a defense mechanism. And thank you for putting help, it help that me, way. Help me propagate that message because I'm frustrated also, you, even with my employees, getting mm, it through, that mm, message. Mm. Because Be, somebody gets a salary on the 30th, they're broke on the 7th. Yes. They're totally broke on the 15th. And the 20th, they don't come to work. Yeah. You know, because they, they ha- couldn't find someone to lend them money. Explain that. I don't understand. So, so like I'm saying... Because I didn't... I, I'm talking from my personal experience. Yes. I never had this problem when my salary was 700 pula. Mm. You know, when I started working, my salary was 700 pula. Mm-hmm. Why do people have a problem when they're earning a lot more than that? The lack of I accept, I accept that things are more expensive, but to me, it's more, much more than that. Yeah, it's a habitual thing. Like I'm saying, a habit is a repeated action. If you continuously repeat something, it becomes a habit. Mm. Whether you like it or not, it will be part of your body system or your mind system because mm. like, okay, money comes and I need to squash this money. I'll see what to do tomorrow. They say you only live once. So they will always give... This lame, shallow reasoning towards their mm. spending, bad, bad spending habits. So if you only live once, then you should live broke. Uh, so they make say. Sense. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, so they will tell no you sense. that. What is a complete financial health status? Right. Um, like I was telling you, when you go to, to a doctor, mm. they will ask you what you ate yesterday. If there's someone in your family who have ever had certain chronic diseases, mm. if um, your, 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 you ever experienced any pain somewhere, mm. they are checking yeah. your health status. So the financial health status is to check if you have the right asset at your age, because there's also age-wise. Mm-hmm. For okay, this age, you are in the right track, but you can't... No, that goes to Mr. Average again. I said we don't <laughs> want to do it anything to, to do with Mr. Average. <laughs> <laughs> so you find that a lot of people... Some of them, they don't see. Someone may have seven federal covers, and you ask them, how many times are you going to die? Mm. Because someone just accumulated. He's working there, getting this one. This one is a union. This one is a motel of seven federal covers. And you for find one person? For one person. I can't believe that. I'm telling you. We put them on to a guy. Mm. And in that issue, you need to tell them, no, cut this, cut this, cut this, cut this, cut. Take the same money put them there, and mm. also develop that plot that you didn't develop. And so make sure that there's a complete... Uh, compliance to tax. We look into taxations. Mm. How much are your taxation in terms of if you have other business, are you paying tax, are you registered with mm. um, BRS to check everything. Secondly, how are your investment? What is your risk appetite? What is your goal in investing? We ask you, we get the idea. What is your um, retirement plan? Because we have a lot of people who are not thinking for retirement, but they are just saying next paycheck, next paycheck. When you talk about retirement, when are you going to retire? Why do you want to retire? Now, where are you retiring to? What are you doing now to prepare for that? Because mm. right now, people are thinking, work, 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 work. They are not thinking that one day they will retire. Mm. And when they retire, they find that they are owing BRS. BRS takes half of the pension. They have nowhere to stay. They have been staying in a company, house, and someone has been not telling them, no, you need to think outside the box and do mm. one, two, three. So would you say, based on that, a financial planner is just as important as a doctor or yeah. a lawyer? Yeah, I call myself the financial doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm. And have you had cases where you've really rescued someone as a result of this exercise? A and lot. Are you able to share one or two uh, serious cases? Okay, I'll share two. Mm-hmm. There was one who had, I think, one of his, you were saying, the, the parents told him, I was working one of the mines, the parent told him to go work and accumulate as much as he can. So everything that is done excessively becomes toxic. So he has accumulated a lot of property, working at Joanne, Rupule, going to Orapa. Everywhere he goes, he buys a plot, an empty plot, a bachelor pad, uh, until there was a time he lost the job. When he lost the job, he has over eight plots. And the, it's only this true that he's owing. Now the bank is coming after him, putting him through lawyers. Say, look, we are repositioning. He didn't want to lose them. 
but I was asking him, okay, you've accumulated this, all this thing, which of them are giving you money? How is it giving you money? So we had to sit down and look and say, you need to let go the attachment issue and start to correct your mistakes. You mean emotional attachment? Yes. So you have been doing a mistake while you are thinking you are doing the right thing. Can you dispose three of this asset, value them, and then clear the loan, and then develop one so I can bring income to help you breathe? Mm -hmm. He did that. He requested for the lawyers to give them a grace period. They agreed. He sold three of his properties, made close to 1.1 million. As Profit? Said, oh. Yeah, in, like after selling these three plots, because they're in a, two in Palape, one in Habarone. So mm. they were empty plots. Uh, the other one had a, in Palape had a structure. Mm. So selling all of them cumulatively was 1.1. Mm -hmm. So you are owing the bank close to 300000 I said, now use some of this money to clear that. Mm -hmm. The remaining built some unit structures here, let this income, I think he managed to raise income for 7000 per month. Mm -hmm. So he, that is the rescue from repossession, mm -hmm. from jail, from termination of employment, to him being reinstated and also being financially healthy. I think the other one let me leave it. They may know no, who I'm please. About. Uh, no, you won't mention <laughs> names. Yeah, we all have same problems. <laughs> so someone will relate. Mm. Then the other one, the issue was um, still the, the the income issue. You are saying, you know, I'm I've committed myself too much. It's mm. always I think also still the debt issue. Mm. They have committed them too much that the take home are so small. Mm. And when you start to check, what are some of your average expenses per month? They will show me, and you'll see that, like I'm saying, they had over, I think, five funeral covers. I said, let's cut them <laughs> off um, to create the breathing. He had, like, four cars. Why do you need four cars? And when you are struggling, mm. please let go of two at least so you can breathe. Mm. Now let's target um, to clear off some of the loans. He, used, he cleared one or two and left with one big one. Mm. So from 1.1 net pay, she was left with around 7,000. Mm -hmm. So it was better for her to think and mm. be better, like correcting her mistake yeah. in that regard. You so, even sort of restore someone's sanity, isn't it? You know, the person starts looking better, better and more. Yes. They, start, they stop working with their, yes. their head down, you know? So people shouldn't think that financial consultants are expensive or they give them money. We give you mm. a direction and help you to get out of that direction. Okay. Um, Before you ask me a question, sir, as we conclude, talk to us about this book. Understanding the stock market. Mm. This is a book that um, I wrote. I, I think I bought shares since 2015 in the stock market when I was still in the university. Mm. Um, and they were doing quite good because it's the companies that are in the stock, are in the property and in the tourism as well as in the banking. So I spent around 10000 buying them and they were giving me good money when I was still a student. I said, oh, so this thing can make money. Mm. And then I wrote my experience on how people can buy, sell, and where to buy, how to buy, what are some of the things to look at when mm. you're choosing a stock, and um, who to go to when you are buying, mm. what is a CSD account, why do you need it, what is the purpose of Botswana Stock Exchange in that regard, and what is a broker, how this broker in between uh, getting there, and also, who is the seller, who is the buyer, how do they work? Yeah. So this is the book explaining yeah. how to make money in the stock market. Where do we get it? In fact, all your books, you have how many? I have four, oh. two published, two unpublished. Okay. Yeah. Uh, understanding the stock market is one, and then? Understanding Motel Stock Fair and Crowdfunding. Yes, and then? There's the other one that uh, is called the Financial Health. Mm -hmm. And then Financial Marital Health. Soon to be published. Soon to be published. Oh, you're doing a great job, sir. Yeah. Here's your chance to hit me with a question now as we as we wrap up. <laughs> um, all right. Um, I think also, Lena, since I'm into personal development, mm. what are you doing to the youth um, that are coming up to start businesses um, to show them and share your experience in the entrepreneurship? What are some of the things you have put in place to help them to come on board or also be a mentor. Are you available for someone yeah. to be assisted in It's funny you're asking the same questions that an earlier guest asked. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have two platforms currently. Okay. One is uh, Angel Network Botswana, A and B. Mm -hmm. Through that, we uh, am head of the co-head of the uh, mentorship committee. In other words, when we've identified a startup that we think potentially we could invest in that wishes to maybe pitch before other angels 
Um, we formed a, I formed an organization with two others, mm -hmm. uh, with a few others called Angel Network Botswana. Mm -hmm. So when we see that there's someone who has a little bit of promise, mm -hmm. we call him, it's me and Guru, we call him, we invite them here, and we, we go through the motions of helping them prepare a pitch deck mm -hmm. for them to pitch mm -hmm. to other investors. Mm -hmm. And we have to mentor him through that process, uh, him or her, and uh, we have, as a result of this, ended up investing in quite a few yeah. of these startups where we then offer not just financial uh, injection, but also the mentorship, ongoing mentorship. Mm -hmm. For instance, a lot of them need a lot of mentorship on the accounting side, you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them need um, uh, mentorship on the distribution side. And then a lot of them need mentorship on the, sometimes even the emotional intelligence aspect of yeah. running a business so we offer that and depending on the area since that close to 50 of us mm. we identify an entrepreneur who can sort of uh, handhold mm -hmm. uh, that entrepreneur and walk them through those difficult um, difficult terrain as they start mm -hmm. because the first thousand days as you know is the toughest, toughest. If you survive the first thousand days ah, you're, you're okay yeah. yeah that's number one number two I've also started a mentorship program mm -hmm. uh, which I called uh, we, which which is a real estate mentorship mm -hmm. and that I've invite uh, youngsters to come normally it's we meet fortnightly I recommend books for them to read and then I share concepts and I share my experiences so so you know the bad amount of rest. The, the what the bad the bad mouth rest absolutely <laughs> I know the good the bad and the ugly yes um, from experience and also from sharing with them and also uh, what I do is I invite other alumni for instance oh, I've already yeah. decided I'm going to invite you as an alumni of uh, Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom to come and share with these mentees That's so great. it's an ongoing effort otherwise mm. i try to say yes more than i say no <laughs> to speaking invitations okay. when i'm invited at church to come and share and talk about entrepreneurship and what we do so it's not much but it's a little bit of an that effort you can do, yeah. and i do make uh, time for one-on-ones every oh, now yeah, and then that's yeah. great. so that's what we do and we'll continue to do it that's great just also to break protocol what's your favorite book I don't have a particular one, mm -hmm. uh, but I have two that are really up there. Okay. Ecclesiastes and Proverbs. Right. Yeah, yeah. but there's many others. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's fair. Thank you okay. so much. Have a look at that and um, at that camera and share one party message, uh, one encouraging message as we conclude. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, so viewers at home, um, wherever you are at work, um, one of the most important things in life is the currency of knowledge. No one will ever steal it from you. Um, so my message to you is to say, wherever profession you are into, the most important thing is to be knowledgeable in that aspect. While being knowledgeable, you need to create wealth for your kids, for your family. Most of us, at some point, will need to leave that workplace. We will need to go home, whatever the situation may be, you need to be prepared to survive that without a salary or start a business outside um, or your job or we call normally call it a side hustle. And while you are doing that, find someone who's credible, a consultant financially, legally, to come and help you set up your startup so that it doesn't find itself in failing to meet the first 1,000 days of startup so that it may be a success. And while we are doing that, learn the basics of financial literacy. We need to learn how to make money, how to manage it, and multiply it. Thank you. Okay, tell them how they can reach you, sir. Give us all your contacts, even on social media. Okay, um, I'm very reachable on my number, 7635-0575. 7635-0575. I'm available on social media, Skawakiosuaiti. You can also check my website, kawakiotoetsi.com, and social media, Facebook, kawakiotoetsi, there's a page, Instagram, Twitter, kawakiotoetsi as well. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for, yes, for coming. It's I guess the books are also available. Yes, sir. Okay. The books All are available. Right. Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful guest, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.